Hi, welcome to Fly Time, the Angler's Art. Um, I'm Carolyn Sells, of course this is Leroy Hyatt, and today we're going to be tying three flies. We're going to be doing the Clark's uh, Stonefly, we're going to do a bug-eyed jig, and a fire butt bomber. Leroy, two steelhead flies. Right, yeah. steelhead flies. And I think you're starting out with the Clark's Clark Stonefly. Stone All right, this is tied on, on a 3X long dry fly hook. This is a size 10. I will use a black dot tying thread. Now with this you could also use a tan color or whatever color you want, but we'll use the black. Uh, the body will be tied with gold uh, flat tinsel. The underwing will be a combination of the rust and the orange poly yarn. I'll comb those together. The overwing will be an elk hair and then the hackle will be brown. Now I have a size 10 long shank in my vise. This is a neat fly in the fact that the wings are totally separate from the whole fly. The wing is tied in at the very front of the, uh, of the hook, I mean the, uh, yeah, the wing is. And it almost then makes it look like it's detached. It very much works in the water. Okay. What I've done now is taken those two sections of poly and I just comb them out just to combine the two. Your uh, special little comb there. Yeah, <laughs> special little comb. So I have that ready to go. Now the body material is this uh, gold flat tinsel. This happens to be a medium. Uh, you could put any one on there you wanted. If you wanted the small, that would be fine. Now Dave and I used to argue about this a lot. Uh, Dave runs the tinsel. When he would tie this tinsel, he starts at the front, goes to the rear and back again. Two layers, uh, so. Yeah, a two layer thing. I don't have a problem with if a little bit of black occasionally will show between the wraps. I don't think it makes that much difference. But I'll go ahead and wrap the body. Now this is gold up. Gold up, okay. yes. And there's lots of variations you could do with this uh, as far as coloration for the wing, depending on, the, on what you're trying to imitate. This will imitate a stone fly, what we're tying this time through. Just a really neat, neat fly. Uh, in our area, we have the Clearwater River, the uh, North Fork of the Clearwater. This fly occasionally just really works well there. I'm going to just trim these straight off just to make them look a little bit neater. I'll lay it on there so that it's just about the length of the, of the hook shank. Okay. Tie it in place. Now you can see with that with You're it combed that out. Pretty close to the too close to the eye. No, because I got to put yeah, I got to put it. a hackle on it yet. Okay. Plus, I have to put some uh, some elk hair on it yet. Okay. A little bit of that straggled out, so I'll just clip that off a little bit straighter. And we'll take some elk hair. And again, you can get the different shades of elk if you want the lighter elk to help you see it. Uh, this fly does float quite high with that poly yarn and the elk combination and the hackle. It all helps it float quite well. I'm going to make this just slightly longer than that wing I just put on. Okay. Lay that in there, get a measurement for it, and clip it off. Now, I, this is what I do a little bit different than you in this, is I clip those off beforehand so I don't have to tie or to take time and clip the butts then later. Yeah, I should probably start doing that. Well, it's just, again, it proves that fly tying is not all one way to do things. There's multiple ways to do it. Now, there's the wing. Now, you can see how that's just going to act mm -hmm. totally naturally in the water. Then I'll take a piece of this brown hackle, tie it in and we'll put the, and it's kind of a heavy hackled fly, but again, really helps it float. Uh, at the fly shop that I work in, we go through quite a few of these. Mark, the guy that I work for that owns the shop, he, uh, he loves this fly on the Clark Fork, on the uh, North Fork of the Clearwater, uses it a lot, sometimes in a lot smaller sizes than this, and does very well with it. He probably fishes the fly more than I do, so this would be an early season stone, late All season All year stone? long okay. he fishes this fly. And it could be uh, more of an attractor pattern than anything, but he absolutely okay. loves that fly. And, and, and he's had good luck with it. You know, you get confidence in what you're using, and that's what you're going to use anyway. I'll tell you, I'm having trouble with stragglers hanging down in there. 
And usually I cut my thread when I do that. You know, you do the same thing, oh, yeah. I'm sure. Many times. I'll put a whip finish on it. But this fly, as heavy as, as it is dressed, with the water resistant material that it has, you can fish it in rough water. It will float very well in rough water. Uh, and whether there's a caddis fly or a stone fly out there hatching, I think the fly will work for yeah. either or. But you can. Or maybe even a hopper. It might hatter. if you change that underwing color, color, I think, mm -hmm. yeah. But as you look at the underside of the fly, you can see that gold uh, body as it shines up between yeah. those wings. And this whole wing section is going to work independently of the whole fly. Water currents will move it around different directions. So there's a Clark nice. stone fly. I've taken the, uh, has a gold tinsel body. Then I comb the orange and the rust colored poly yarn to make the underwing. The overwing is natural elk hair. The front hackle is brown. And now for the second fly, Carolyn will tie a bug-eyed jig. I have seen this fly. You showed me one. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like a tremendous steelhead fly, but I see an awful lot of material out here yeah, to go on bulky, that little huh? hook. Yes, it really <laughs> does. So, Carolyn, a bug-eyed jig. Okay, we're gonna. What we're gonna start out with is, of course, our black thread. Uh, mm -hmm. We got eight odd thread, or excuse me, six odd thread. What we're going to use is a uh, number two hook with a uh, sixty degree drop leg on the front of it. So okay. it's basically a jig hook. Right, it's okay. a jig hook. We're going to okay. use a barbell mm -hmm. eyes, the weighted eyes. Uh, we've got some poly yarn for, for uh, part of the body. And then we have two colors of deer hair and we're going to put a little flashaboo on it also. And then we've got some uh, uh, small tight uh, pink red chenille to go. Fluorescent okay. chenille. Yeah, fluorescent chenille. Okay. You know, I, I fish barbell eyes on occasion, but about three years ago, I blew up a rod when oh. I hit it with the uh, fly as it went by. That's always my worst fear. So I, boy, <laughs> yes, mine too. Yep. <laughs> Screwing up the cast well, I was and trying to power the cast out and the wind was blowing and uh, that's a sickening feeling when you watch the whole end of your 15 foot rod going down the line into the water. Yeah, and it makes a terrible, terrible sound. Okay, we're going to do a few figure eights, and we're going to put this uh, little barbell eye here Well, you're putting on. it on the top side. Yep. But when you get it completed, then that fly is going to ride gonna, upside it's down. It's going to ride upside okay. down. Okay. We're going to make sure this thing is tightened down real good. But this is uh, my favorite steelhead fly right here. Now, do you right ever here. put a painted jig hot eye on there? You know, I, I learned this pattern from Quentin Cook. He's from um, Orofino, Idaho, uh -huh. and it, he actually has a scented uh, paint that he puts on oh, his really? eyes, so that's quite unusual. Uh, but yeah, and he paints them right on, right on his eyes. So we're going to glue this down real good here. Okay. And then we're going to go back here to the back, and we're going to add a little bit of this poly, um, I don't know, it's kind of like a, a poly stretch material here in the back. Oh, it's not polypropylene then. Uh, that's a little longer than I want. Yeah, it's almost a stretch poly. Okay. Now, Quentin's theory was on here that if you get a short hit, you've got this little bit of very fine poly here oh. in the back and they're got a mouthful of teeth and, yep. and the your tooth chances, will hang up you in got that. a fraction yes. of a second okay. longer sure. to set that hook on sure. them so Could well be. that's that's the story behind there now mm -hmm. we're going to take a little pinch of red knock off all the fuzzies here under fur fuzzies okay we're going to stack this out Someday I'm going to teach you what all nope, that is. Nope, it'll always be fuzzies. <laughs> hey, you know, got to tell it like it is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put now, the is red. Is this deer here or is that this, elk Yeah, this is, is I deer? think this is deer. Okay. And we're going to try your trick. We're going to trim this off. That's what you always do, right? So if it doesn't work, I get yeah, it. Yeah, it doesn't work if it all falls on the floor. Okay, we're going we're gonna to tie this up right right next to those 
that eye. That okay? okay. Yes, we are. We're going to tie this in real tight up here. We're going to put the red on one side. So you don't let it spin. Right. Okay, and then we're going to take but a few little loosers. But what's the body material? You have no body then. I have no body? Hmm, okay. okay. Well, I haven't seen any yet. You haven't seen any yet. Okay. Okay, knock off my fuzzies. All right. Okay, we're I'll gonna knock stack off the this. under fur. Yeah. You knock off the off fuzzies. Off the fuzzies. That'll work. Okay, and we're going to tie the orange here on the other side. Got a few short ones in here. Oh, you're tying them on each side. Mm -hmm. I thought you were yeah. tying top and bottom. Nope, we're gonna we're gonna put them on either side. Oh, okay. They'll run a little bit together, but yeah, yeah, that's fine. We're gonna also tie well, this one up real tight. Yeah, we're gonna give him a two tone together. look. Sure. Okay. Knock off the guys that are loose. And that here. deer here is gonna really move in the water yes, too. Yes, it is. Now, do you fish this on a floating line or sinking line? Um, I'm using a sinking line with this with this fly. Sink tip or full sink? Uh, actually, I'm using a type 3, which is a slower okay. full yep. sink okay. line. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, we're going to... So you're really in. dredging the bottom. Then you you're bet. fishing this when the water's cold. Yes. Okay. Okay, now we're going to do a little flash here. Window dressing. Window dressing. Just to add a little more, you know, a little more color to it. Like it hasn't got enough already. Well, this will give the sparkle yeah, to it sparkle more to so it. than just color. And we're going to make this just a little bit longer than that deer hair. I'm going to loop it to start. We'll cut that off. Are you going right on top? Yeah, right on top. Right between the two colors then, basically. Okay, tie that down. Now, do you leave that looped? No, I'm going to cut it just like oh, that. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, now here comes a really neat trick. Let's see if we can do this good. This is what amazed me about this little little fly here. We're going to tie in our, our chenille. We're going to tie it right in here behind these eyes. Tie it in good. And then we're going to go off over here and we're going to, we're going to finish the we're going to finish out here. We're going to whip this thing. So the chenille is actually going to become the head. Oops, I missed a, missed a loop there. Okay, we're going to whip finish it, okay? Cut this off. Now here's what's really cool. We're going to whip finish this chenille. Okay, oh, so we're going to take, yeah, this is pretty. We're going to take a couple loops. We're going to make sure we fill in all the holes around okay. those eyes. All right. Okay. And then, oh, I don't think I left this long enough. We'll see if I did. We're going to whip finish this thing right around here and pull this down tight. So you don't have a thread finish. And we don't there. have a thread finish. And look at that little now, will guy. Will that stay? You will know, that stay on there? Uh, this, this little fly right here is, I have caught the biggest steelhead I've ever caught with this little jig right here. But really? isn't that a cutie? It really is. Um, we were sitting in the boat, shooting the breeze, you know, casting, doing mm -hmm, the doing mm -hmm. the drift through the water, talking Automatic up. cast, yeah. And all I of a know. sudden the line stops, right? Uh -huh. You know, and I'm going, Quentin, I think I've got a fish. And all of a sudden this thing starts peeling off line and he goes, and you knew fish, you'd have a fish. fish. <laughs> But this is the little fly right here, and that was about 18, 18 pound wow, steelhead. I was so excited. Neat. That's neat. But there's the little, there's the little jig right there. This is bug Quentin's bug-eyed jig, bug uh, Quentin Cook pattern. And what I used was a little poly yarn uh, for tail section. Mm -hmm. uh, we have red and orange deer hair. Uh, we have a little flash of boo running off the back and um, chenille head with barbell eyes. And whip finish the chenille head. Yeah, isn't that a cool Blows trick? Blows me away. Blows me away. Quentin's bug-eyed jig. Okay, the next fly we're gonna do is a fire butt bomber. Mm -hmm. Now this is a floating steelhead, steelhead fly, fly, right? Uh, what materials are we gonna use for this one? Okay, I'll use a six-aught black tying thread. The hook is a light wire steelhead hook. It's a size four. The wing and tail for this will be the white calf tail. 
Now you can tie this fire butt or flash butt, some people call it, in either red or green. That's a very bright, sparkly material. I'll dub it on for the butt. The regular deer hair then will be spun and clipped to shape. The hackle will be brown. I have a number four in the vise. I have pinched the hook or the barb and we'll start this tying thread. Now we're going basically here from one extreme to the other. You just did a very heavy right. sinking steelhead fly. This will be a floating fly. I think the fly was originally designed, a lot of these flies that I've tied go to Russia. Uh, they fish for them over there for Atlantic salmon, some of the big steelhead that are over there in mm -hmm. some of those rivers, but have tremendous luck with that, that flash or that fire butt, as some people call them. You know, here's a little trick. We got a little time, I, I'll show you this. Many times when people take hair out that they've just stacked, right. you pull it out, oh shoot, the tips are going the wrong way, so you try to turn it around in your hand. All you have to do is turn your, well, except I dumped it all out in my <laughs> hand. All you have to do is turn the, uh, hair stacker around mm -hmm. and take them out the other way. That way everything's going the direction you want it to go. You don't have to fool around with turning it in your hand. Makes it very simple. All right, here comes the wing, the front wing. Tie it on and I'll run toward the rear. Go about halfway and I'll clip the rest of those butts off. Now you've used this fly? I have not, but you I'll tell you, I am going to this year. Okay. Uh, I, I, I don't know why. I, I guess I, I didn't even think about it when dry fly season was on for steelhead. You know, and, and I say dry fly season. It depends on what the water temperature is right. um, with whether or not I would use the fly. But no, I am definitely going to try that. Because this should a, be a good skater, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I've caught a lot of fish on a standard bomber. And when I started tying this, I thought, man, oh, man, that's got to work for uh, steelhead in our area. So, yes, I do plan to tie that, definitely. All right, here's the tail. Now, at this point, there's absolutely no difference in this fly and a standard, standard bomber. Standard bomber, okay. Except what I do right now. I'm going to take this dubbing. Bright, bright, bright green. Bright, bright, bright dubbing and get a little on the thread. And it doesn't take a whole lot, but. And with this, I'm going to make a dubbing loop. I'm not gonna just wrap okay. it. This is too stiff a material for it to come out that way. But like we said at the opening, you can use it either red or green. Uh, some people have a preference for one as the other. It's just whatever so you- So you did a little wrap around there to hold that loop, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yeah, I closed that, idea. that, yes. So I'll give this a quick spin, and I don't want it spun real tight because I want that to be spiky, have it stick out spiky. Okay. Anyway, have that stick out. Then I'll, run, I'll bring my tying thread back, tie it off. Now you can see where it gets its name. Yes, that's really bright. And I think probably originally it was tied with the red. That's why the name fire, fire butt, butt or flash yeah. butt. Now I'll tie this brown hackle in. Get that all bound down. And then here comes the part that some people have trouble with, some don't, deer hair. Yeah. Uh, some people love to trim it or step in with it. Some people hate it. I'm not it's, so good. Uh, I, I enjoy tying with it. Uh, we'll clip off a small section. I'll get the under fur out. Excuse me, I'll get the fuzzies, fuzzies out yeah. as you call it. I get the right name. I will t I trim that. You All I have both now, sides. both okay. sides. All I have is a small clump left in my hand. Soft loop, as soon as it starts to flare as I pull on the mm -hmm. thread, let it go and spin it right around the hook. You make that look way too easy. Now I'm going backwards just slightly. Okay. All right, I'm gonna move all that to the front, mm -hmm. get my thread in front, take another section. And you don't want to get real big sections of this hair. I think that's uh, where I mess up. I try to spin yeah, too much. And believe it or not, a large section of deer will cut the thread more so than anything. I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's the friction that's doing it. I don't know. So Same again, you're thing. trimming both sides. I'm okay. trimming both sides, yes. 
Lay that in front, again, soft loop. As soon as it starts, so follow it right loop. around the hook. Now I'm going backwards into that first clump. What that does is marry everything together. Uh, as far as the deer hair goes, it marries it together. One more clump, I'll get my thread in front. Take one more section of hair. And this doesn't need to be a very big section. You can see there's not a great deal of uh, material or a bare hook there okay. left to cover. Same thing, soft wrap, spin it around. Mm -hmm. Back into the first section, here in the front. Now, right here, I'm gonna uh, put a whip finish on it. I'm gonna cut my thread. The hook will now come out of the vise and I'll trim it. What I'm gonna do first is turn that fly upside down mm -hmm. and trim that belly flat. So it's gonna be the flat part. Without a flat belly, the fly won't sit right in the water. It'll okay. have a tendency to tip over one way or the other. Then I'll turn it around so I have the hook eye in my hand and just start trimming this hair in the rear so it comes out small, about the same diameter as the uh, green or red we okay, just spun so on there. It's in real tight, okay. Yes, and what I've done, I laid the bottom edge of my scissor against the, uh, the hackle that I don't want to cut off. If you're concerned about cutting that hackle off or breaking it, tie in two. Okay. Because if you break one or cut one off, then you kind of got to back up. You, you don't have to start all over. You don't need it. That's right. Okay. Now I'm trimming it in a cigar shape or a barrel shape, if you will, so it's longer in the front than it is in the rear. Uh, some people will call it a triangle shape. It's uh, what it does with that larger section in front, it creates more disturbance in the water. And that's what you're okay. looking for, is that disturbance as it goes through the water. Yeah, it should pop just a little bit. Yeah, you? You, if you twitched it hard, however, I do more of a dead drift than okay. anything. Now I'm gonna run around this thread just to get rid round of all those off. stragglers. Yep, round it all off. And like we've said before, working with deer hair, you never know when to quit trimming. Back in the vise, I'll start my tying thread. Don't know what I did with it right where I left off because I still have to bring that hackle right. up. So my thread is there and here comes the hackle. Now again this hackle is going to help that fly float. Oh so you're going right through the deer hair. Right oh, cool. through the deer hair. And you know it will sit up on that that hackle a little bit uh, when it starts to get a little bit waterlogged the deer hair, mm -hmm. uh, it will help it float, that hackle will. Clip that off. I got one straggly hair over here I wanna get rid of. <clears throat> and then we'll put a whip finish on it. Okay. Now when I uh, finish this fly off, I always give it two coats of head cement. I just broke my thread. I can salvage it. Glad you do that one once in a time. while. Oh, Makes me feel better. Without a doubt. <laughs> You know, if you told me you didn't break your thread, I'd question your hey, fishing. Hey, you've seen me break my thread. I mean, I know you're going to tell me lies about fishing. <laughs> wow, I broke it again. All you can right. always tell lies about fishing. Yep. All right, I've, I have fly is complete, except I'll put a little bit of head cement on it, which makes it very durable. And even with breaking that thread, I know I this. I think you got it there. This is going to seal yeah. it up. So there's a fire butt or flash butt bomber, if you will. It's got white calf tail for the wing and tail. It's got uh, the dubbed green sparkly or red if you want, natural deer hair and brown hackle. And that concludes another show. Three again different flies, a Clark stone fly, dry drought trout fly, and then a bug eye jig, heavy weighted steelhead fly, and then a floating steelhead fly, the fire butt bomber. So there you have it. Come back again next week. We'll have three different flies. Thank you very much.
Leroy and Carolyn have produced a 60-minute video demonstrating how to tie 10 of their favorite flies. Available on DVD number 28 for $18.95 plus shipping and handling. Programs from this series are also available on DVD. Each disc contains two programs and costs $18.95 plus shipping and handling. Please indicate disc number 24 for this episode. You can get the complete series of 13 programs for $89.95. Credit cards are accepted. To order, call 1-800-883-0124 or visit our website, kwsu.org. For more information about this program, please visit our website, kwsu.org.